not that I don't like y'all, but I'm shutting the door so you don't go around the door or open. It's not your fault. You know, I'm just conducting business. I shut the door, you all go on. Hey, Kent, one of those 19 was the ivory build. I'm not sure where the 18th one was. So I'm looking at the list of set that says 17. What is your resource? Birdfeederhub.com, which doesn't sound that exciting and accurate. But they said there's 17, but uh, they don't mention the ivory billed woodpecker, which is either nearly extinct or extinct. No, I would say they're extinct, but we no. can't. Yeah. Um, but if you count that one, that makes it 18 on this list. I've made reference to the National Geographic Field Guide of North America. Yeah. I, like of, you said, it's kind of the Bible, but there's doc, lots of different resources. They might have one on there that uh, is missing or taken off the list. I don't know why. It doesn't really yeah. matter. So the number should be 18, I guess. And over an iced tea Sunday, we'll figure out what that other 18th one is. Yeah, that's sweet. So one of the customer service guys here is in the process of building some bird feeders, some bluebird houses, and some owl boxes. And he's going to put uh, video, Camera. cam video oh, cameras that's, in them. That's cool. So you can stream it. Cool. It's cool watching this hummingbird when it beats its wings forward, how, right. its, it, how its feathers on its back fluff up. Huh. Good observation. Oh, yeah, right. Poof. I'm still amazed at how tiny their nests are, you know? Oh, you know. <laughs> Well, hello, everybody. It's uh, Scott Roberts from Explore Scientific and the Explore Alliance. And uh, we have our fifth install of On the Wing with Dan George and Kent Martz. And um, what, are we, uh, what are we focusing on today? We are focusing on woodpeckers. All so right. Let me get everything set up here because I don't really like launching all this until get going because then I can't see my screen real well. So Dan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking, man. Yeah, yeah good. 91 degrees here in the Denver area, which is kind of warm for a change. Yeah. 91. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's warmish. That's warmish. 
Uh, I'd like to recognize people that are signed on today. We've got Richard Grace and Cameron Gillis, Jeff Wise, uh, Beatrice Hines, um, Eduardo Simone, uh, Martin Eastburn, Cheryl Gibson, Cheryl Gibson <laughs> says Gesundheit. Uh, Space Time with Robert, he's on. Uh, that's great. Um, uh, Beatrice Hines, I might have mentioned. Uh, Mike Wiesner, where's Alfred Hitchcock? Any show with birds should have him. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Harold Locke, thankful for Thursday. Hello, hope all is good. Um, let's see, and who else? We got Benjamin Pike on. A perfect moment can be a universe unto itself. There you go. That's that's very Profound. true. All right, so here we go. And uh, space time with, uh, oh yeah, just space time with Robert. Is, he's watching the Bellingham, Washington. He's watching from Bellingham, Washington. So coast to coast here, folks. That's great. Uh, and uh, Mike says, Mike Wiesner says, it's only 102 Fahrenheit here in Southern Arizona. Humidity is <laughs> probably 20%. So yeah, he's probably wearing a sweater. So yeah. it's, a, it's a dry heat, like a convection <laughs> oven. <laughs> yeah. So I just point out, people say, well, it's a dry heat. Yes. And yeah, and you cook meat in a convection oven, and that's a dry heat with wind, too. So anyway, all right, so here we go. So let's get on with uh, woodpeckers. Uh, Mel, red-bellied woodpecker, I like this pose because oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's not a pose you normally see. Normally we see, and we're going to look at a few others here uh, that, uh, you know, um, look more, you know, with the wings folded. But I thought this was a really cool uh, pose. Uh, clearly an eastern United States bird, basically uh, Oklahoma, uh, Kansas, parts of Nebraska, up into Minnesota, across the Great Lakes, due east to the east coast. Here comes the bird. Yeah, subscribe. Yeah. That's the sound I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with right there. Yeah, for people that are bird watchers by ear, um, you hear that sound. Now there's 18 woodpeckers in North America, but there's only one that makes that sound and that's the red-bellied woodpecker, which we see right now. And the interesting thing about the red-bellied woodpecker is that you almost rarely see the red on the, on the belly. <clears throat> it's uh, quite interesting. That Oh, the red-bellied woodpecker when in fact it's got a nice big red head if it's a male, you know? I've always, you know, and people oftentimes call the red-bellied woodpecker the a red-headed woodpecker because it's got a red head. So if they're not familiar with the red-headed woodpecker, uh, they go with this. So that's, there, there it is. Now, as we're looking at this picture that Kent is providing to us, it's a great picture, by the way, that's a male because there's red on the on the crown and the nape. The nape is the back side of right above the neck. That's called the nape. Right in here. So, right there. So the male has a red from the 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 crown, actually the forehead and the crown and the nape. The female only has red on the nape. So when you see them in the in the field, if you don't see any red on the forehead or the crown, that's the female. Now that that was, I mean, that that image by Sheldon Forsky was outstanding. It really was. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, if you look at it, it's it's got a little piece of corn or something in its uh, beak, right here. It blends in with that piece of wood in the background. But uh, you know, Sheldon's using a Explore Scientific telescope with a camera on it, and uh, pre-focuses and waits for birds to land there and then starts firing away. And, yeah. you know, does does some great 
uh, work. So our next slide gives us a better image of why it's called the red-bellied woodpecker. Mm -hmm. And he's identified as a male and you can see red right here on the back of its neck, which Dan just told us identifies it as a male. So right here is that red belly, um, you know, that makes it a red bellied woodpecker. And we've got another one. Uh, he identified this, Sheldon identified this as a female red bellied. Dan, what do you think? It is because the red is only on the nape. Ah, right here. Right. It's the back of its head. Back of its right. head down towards his neck, right? Yep. So to that's, look at the difference. Shot. So, sir. That's a great shot. Yep. So, and here's a male. And if you look closely, I should have blown this up. You can see the little hairs on its tongue in this picture. <laughs> it's in dead perfect focus. I apologize for not thinking about that, but crop in on it. And you can see the little hairs on its tongue that it uses to, to lick up the sap, um, you know, or, or to grab the bugs in this case. Uh, so going back real quick, female, because it's on the back of its neck. And boy, you know, doesn't that snow look good, Mike Wiesner? Doesn't it make you just cool off just looking at all that <laughs> snow? I mean, it just takes you back to the Even here, here it's hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... You know, just for just for 30 minutes, walk out in the snow, you know, yeah, and then come back to what, what you had. So moving on, here's a Sheldon photo of a male downy woodpecker. Uh, these are smaller birds than the uh, previous birds we were looking at. And let's listen to it. Now, if I remember, this is not a real good audio, but it's the only audio I could find. So here we go. That baby's begging, isn't it? Now that's a sound when you, for those that are birding by ear, it's interesting to note that over the 900 birds in North America, only one bird in North America, woodpecker makes that sound and it's the downy woodpecker. And as a contrast to the, to the red belly that we saw that, that uh, Kent had up there, that bird was nine and one quarter inch long, but the downy woodpecker is the shortest woodpecker in North America and is only six and three quarter inches long. <laughs> and when you look at, if you were to see that, and, and we're gonna to go to another one that's similar to this next, but this particular downy woodpecker is very common in the woods, very common in, in neighborhoods as well. If you see that little tiny beak or bill, it's, it's synonymous, bill or beak, however you wanna say it, it's really uh, maybe one third the length of its head. It's very, very small little bill. And that right there will identify it as a downy. Okay. And then additionally, if it has red at, at the nape, right at behind, you know, behind the crown, if it's red, it's a male. So um, why is it called downy? It's because the feathers look downy. Any idea that the, the history of that name? No, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't. Yeah. I've always wondered why it's called a downy woodpecker. All right. So let's listen to it a little bit more. So I know that's a male because it's got red. And that's a female feeding the nest. No red, correct? I'm looking at a at a male downy. Yeah, but on the video, can you see the video? No.
All right, so going on, let's see. What do we got next? So here's a male hairy woodpecker. They look, quote, look alike, hmm. but are they really? No, there's quite some, some big differences. The first thing is the bill or the beak. It's almost the length of its head from the back of its head to the eye. You take that and then you superimpose that to the bill. It's a very long beak compared to the short billed downy. So let's go back to the downy real quick and look. You know how short that, that short that bill is? So we'll go forward again. It looks like not even maybe a quarter of an inch, something like yeah. that. Uh, Ken, would you go to the previous, uh, previous yes, sir. picture? There, there we go. Do you see the white on the back? Yeah. Right here. Now, when you are in the field and you are hearing these woodpeckers, there's only two woodpeckers that are going to have white on the back, the downy and the hairy. So, Kent, there's see the white on the back? Now, only the hairy and only the downy have white on the back. This helps with identifying species. And then also, the hairy woodpecker is not six and three quarter inches long. It's... Um, it's actually uh, nine and a quarter inches long. Oh, wait, let me check that. I think I might. That have sounds right. That sounds right. Yeah, almost ten inches long. So yeah. it's a, so significantly mm -hmm. bigger. You know, four inches bigger, give or take. Well, actually, almost three inches. But the point of it is, when you're in, when you're looking at woodpeckers in the in the um, in the in the wild, you really don't know how how large they are unless you saw two together. And sometimes you can, but not very often. But you look at the bill first, and if you hear the little the, the little tick pick 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 that we heard on the downy, the hairy has a different sound. I, I think you maybe have the sound there. Yep, here we go. Is that peak. Yeah, this is where I couldn't find any video of good sound. Well, let me just share with folks watching that in the background was a downy woodpecker. <laughs> I mean, they're they're similar. All they, right, here we go. The downy, the downy is a short little is a short little pick pick pick, but the uh, the hairy woodpecker is more of a peak, more of a trill peak. So it says not yet. I I started the video early, in the right before it did it. And not yet, here it comes. There it was. That's good. Wow. Not good sound, but you get sort of an idea. There's a lot of background noise and so many oh, other I birds. See. I was like, yeah. good Lord. There's a lot of the birds in there too. I want to add, okay. uh, Kent, I want to add one other significant thing, because for people that want to get into real bird identification, if you take a look at the picture we're looking at right now is the hairy. Take a look at the tail and look at the, on the edge. The outer tail feathers are all white. All right. Now, if you can go back to the downy and we'll see the tail. Uh, it's Yeah, it's really hard to see that he's got the arrow to uh, Go to the left, you know, those right there, there's like two bars, little black bar. No, go to the left. More there, though. So, okay, when you're in the field, you'll actually see more. Basically, it's a it's a white outer tail feather with, with barring, but the down the downy has the barring, but the hairy does not. See that, that right there? There we go. Perfectly white tail. But normally it's the normally it's the size of that hairy. Look how nice and big that thing is with the white on the back and the outer tail feathers that are pure white. And this happens to be a male. Once again, if it didn't have red on the back, it would be a female. But the beak is the, the big, oh, yeah. the big, if you've got binoculars on it, the beak is the giveaway. Yeah. And if you had one in each hand, Kent, one is like three inches longer than the other one, but then you're in the field. It's kind of hard to tell that distance. Right. Because scale, we just can't tell how big things are. 
Okay, so going on. Uh, here's a picture of a female. Perfect. Again, Great shot. Beautiful shot uh, for Mike Wiesner. Cool him off. Uh, and plus, once again, sometimes redundancy is the best teacher. Look, he's yep. got white on the outer tail feathers. Right. There's no, bar there's no barring. He's got white on the back. And look at the size of that beak. Most half the head, more than half the head. Yeah, more yeah. than half a head, right. Yeah. So. Good shot. Harry Woodpecker. The skill to take this and get it in focus and the patience displayed is astounding here. Um, to get that kind of a tight, 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 highly detailed in focus. Let me add, uh, if I could, Kent, one more thing about woodpeckers. All woodpeckers have uh, tails that are very functional because in every case, even with their cousins, the, the, the northern flicker or uh, in, in some cases uh, the sap suckers, because they're all kind of like woodpeckers, they use the tail to help them uh, support themselves when they're on a vertical branch. So they'll push it down against the tree yes. to provide a little bit more friction? Yes, sir. Cool. Yes, sir. Okay. So here comes a cool shot. Oh, great shot. So yeah. male hairy woodpecker, because it's got the red, and it's got the patch on the back, and we can tell how big the beak is. And here's a juvenile, and difficult to tell whether it's a male or a female. Uh, look at, but look at the tail. Look at the tail of, of the juvenile. Mm -hmm. Look at yep. that white. Yep. And, and something I was reading, all woodpeckers have four toes, except for the aptly named three-toed woodpecker, which is apparently up <laughs> yeah. in Alaska and Canada. How they came up with that name, I don't know. But oddly, and, I, and I've got to read up more on it, it said that all three toes face forward. So the only way it can hang, I presume, is it can't hang upside down because then just fall off the tree because it doesn't have a, anything to grip. So, uh, But they beef, do have their tail. And they do have their tail they could prop up on. So... Anyway, that's a cool picture. You know, feeding a little something. It looks like a larvae or something. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a great shot. Yeah. Great shot. I, 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 just, I just don't know how much. I know he pays them in food to pose, but they <laughs> pose really well for him. But he, he does pay them in food. So. Philip Provarsky is an amazing bird photographer. Amazing. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, going on to the king of the woods as far as i'm concerned uh because uh, you you know hawks and stuff but this bird is just a glorious bird uh the pileated or pileated woodpecker i used to say pileated i've started saying pileated and i can't tell you why they're both uh, right correct yeah yeah but i don't know it's just i don't know why i've started saying pileated because the first four letters are pile. It's from, so, there, you're from Arkansas, that's why. Yeah, I'm from Arkansas. I speak <laughs> Arkansas. Here we go. Wow. And they just go on and on with that call. And it is astoundingly loud. The, uh, the pileated actually is 16 and a half inches long from the, from the tip of the tail to the tip of the beak. I guess the woodpecker's called the woodpecker because it just, it can hammer its head into, with its beak into the trunk of a tree and find insects. Um, you know, that's got to be a lot of force because they, you know, I've heard that they can hit a tree about 20 times. Was it 20 times as minute or something like a that second. a second okay i think all right a second. so how does it not how can it not get a headache banging its head back and forth or get a concussion or something i was telling my wife how do you know they don't have a headache <laughs> i don't I, know you know really yeah they say they can't that's what i've heard anyway so because they're because they're engineered to deal with it that's why I mean, if if they look at us and say, gee, how come, you know, walking doesn't hurt your feet? 
you know, I, because we're engineered, although walking does hurt our feet. But uh, this is a great picture of a, of, of a pileated woodpecker on a log uh, looking for, you know, uh, grubs and, and larvae and such. Um, you know, they'll get up in trees and they hammer hard. Uh, they knock off bark, uh, you know, in a very, uh, when they're flying through the woods, everything in the woods knows there's a pileated woodpecker around because they are not afraid to announce their presence to the forest. <laughs> Actually, this is the fourth woodpecker we're talking about today. And note that all four of these are non-migratory. So if you see them in the, in the woods in, in November, you'll see them in May. So they, they're just hmm. here breeding, not migratory. Interesting. They're, they're not yeah. migratory. So which, wherever they're living is where they have their, their broods. Which if you look at this map, there you go. You know, and, and I am getting ready to start building a house. And after I get it done, you know, there's, there's one and I would leave it, but I have to get a driveway into it. And there's a big dead tree on it. And the top's mm. broken out. It's just a standing stump, you know, 30 foot tall. And it's full of birds. And I feel terrible about it. So I'm going to try and get some logs, you know, 30 foot logs and haul them in and drill a hole and stand them up and to create my own dead standing timber hmm. to attract birds. Um, simply because of that, I, you know, I find somebody, you know, cutting down firewood, get a log, haul it in on a hay trailer and, and, and stand it up, drill a hole and stand it up and try and create my own woodpecker habitat. Cool. Just don't, uh, just don't cut down all the dead trees in your property because I mean, when you have a dead tree out there, it's part of the erosion process, right? And when you have erosion going on, then you have insects that like to attack those trees. And then yep. all of a sudden it, it, it invites all of these wonderful woodpeckers and other birds too. You know, it's a, I just, I have to put it there because it's a power line and it's the only place for the road to go. And it's just killing me because there's bluebirds that have nests in it. Uh, there's woodpeckers that have a nest in it, but I, it's just, I can't, there's no place else to put the road. Well, uh, another thing to add here, even though we're looking at, uh, we're looking at this male pileated woodpecker. It's it's got it's got a pretty prominent red crown crest. Okay, yeah. um, it, it the female also has reddish on its crown or crest, but it's not real red. So if you see two of them in the area, one looks like it's a one looks like it's a, just to fade it out. That's the female. You see this particular here. It's brilliant. It's the male. This is, by the way, if I could just add one thing about our robin we talked about before, you'll see both the male and the female robins. When you see a robin with a red breast, but actually, actually basically is like rusty, rusty gold or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. then you see one that's kind of faded out. The faded out one is the female and the one with the brilliant colors on the breast of the robin is the male. Mm. Also, the, the, uh, the inspiration for Woody Woodpecker, cartoon character, uh, it actually is the pileated woodpecker. Hmm. Which is why he has that laugh. Yep, which is sort of sounds like it. So uh, this is a National Park Service photo. I couldn't find it. A, a, I do have a photo from one of our photographers, but it's not a, a, a mature bird. So we went with a uh, uh, National Park Service, a public domain photo. This is the yellow-bellied sapsucker. And uh, uh, as you can see, they, they migrate uh, up into Canada for breeding uh, and then come back here. Although the fact that Terry Stanfield got a juvenile being fed in Benton County, Arkansas, tells me that there's probably a breeding population in Benton County, Arkansas, at least of one couple decided to stay down here. It's like the country song says, uh, um, I'm in this town because that's where the car broke down and my parents set down roots. You know, there's, <laughs> there's some, some birds that, that must have stayed here. Let's listen to the yellow-bellied sapsucker, another uh, unique sound.
Stop it there, Camp, if you can. All right. For those that are watching, the people that have sight, <laughs> anyway, the, <laughs> there's and when we uh, Kent and I were talking before the show started today about the fact that sap suckers are actually a woodpecker as well, but there is a unique di distinction between woodpeckers and sap suckers, and they might all have the same diet too. But you might see if this if this bird were vertical on a on a, like like the other bird picture in, in the center, you'll see that long broad white uh, side patch. Yeah, go on the one of the movie uh, on the YouTube. You see that? Okay. There are, I think, four sap suckers, and all sap suckers will have that extremely obvious, bold, white, uh, vertical um, side patch. Almost like a racing stripe. Exactly. So, I mean, when you're in the when you're in the field or out there in the, in the woods. And you see a woodpecker, and it's got this, and it's going to be all, it's really, really white. It's really broad. You'll say that's a sap sucker, and they'll be thinking you're brilliant, you know? And then you go on to the other things. The forecrown on the male is actually um, is red, but it has a black and white head. So it has a black and white head, but the, uh, the, the forecrown or right in front of the crown is red. And then the female will have, um, the white, the, the chin and the throat are white. As opposed to red, female, like on the male. Female. But on the, but on the male, it's a beautiful black and it's black and red. So I, I oftentimes growing up confused the, the flicker with a sap sucker. Um, and uh, I've learned the difference now, but uh, previous, you know, years ago, but for a long time, I always called it a, a flicker, a yellow bellied sap sucker because they both have sort of yellow on their bellies and I was wrong. Um, the cool thing, you'll see these rows of holes drilled into a tree. So the sap suckers drill those holes and then come back and they don't suck the sap, they lick the sap. So oh. these properly should be called yellow bellied sap lickers. But, uh, <laughs> and that right there is a distinction of sap suckers. Woodpeckers are not gonna be drilling holes for the purpose of getting sap. The sap suckers have the objective of getting sap from trees. Right. And then they, the diet gets supplemented because bugs get stuck in the sticky sap and they'll eat the bugs that get in there too. Right. But their primary goal is to, to sap. sap. Right. All right. So let's listen a little bit more. So we hear. Lots of birds in this audio. Hmm. Dan, are all those, is all that sound sap suckers? Or is that background noise? Well, I honestly don't know, Kent. Uh, yeah. You know, for trying to hear just the sap sucker, it's kind of hard. There's a white-throated or white-crowned sparrow. I mean, there's, I mean, I've picked up things like thrushes and all kinds of interesting things on these. <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's just so many birds in there. All right, so moving on. Um, so that's our five birds. And, oh, no, okay. Here is the juvenile yellow-bellied sapsucker as identified by Terry, hmm. uh, by Terry Stanfield which he shot here in Benton County. So I presume that juveniles can may have migrated back um, in the fall and winter, um, uh, possible. Yeah. This also could be a month from fledging also. And since birds will, will continue to molt and change their, their feathering, you don't see the white broad um, side patch. Right. But you, do, you, see the, but you do see the tail giving the bird uh, support. Mm -hmm. And you can also see the red starting to come out its, on its forehead. That would make it a male. Yep. Well, you never know. You got to wait. Right. Let it but grow up a little bit. Let it grow up. So 
uh, an update on the American Robin nest. This was June 24th at 8 a.m. And that was June 29th at 8 a.m. And I think we'd seen that picture. <clears throat> and that was June 30th at 8 a.m. And um, we had a terrible rainstorm come in June 30th. And it continued at high winds. And, and uh, there's a tower here by the building that a couple of guys got caught up, caught up on the top of the, what do you think it is, Scott? A couple hundred feet tall, 300 feet maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would not. I mean, there's just no way I would have been up there when that knowing that that storm's coming. I mean, yeah, would imagine anybody that goes up onto a platform like that checks the weather before they go. But and, and, and they're 300 foot tall and they can see the storm coming and they're up there. And it's I mean, it was coming down like a fire hose. Yeah. And the wind was blowing and it was lightning and they finally came down. So I, it was rated on on uh july the first so i didn't check the nest on july the first i came out on july the second to find this and so you know we're talking about a week and a little bit um too early to fledge and i was like oh no and so i started looking around a little bit and um this is the sad thing that i found uh, on the trunk of the tree and uh, I looked in all the bushes and on the ground, couldn't find the other two. So this little thing with its eyes closed and still hadn't opened its eyes. Um, uh, you know, mama was uh, nowhere around for a while. I finally, there's the baby. It, so it, it has moved uh, probably two and a half feet because it was over on the right side of the trunk. So I circled the baby in red. And if you look closely, you can see the mama up there in the tree. Um, this is about 10 o'clock. I tried to go back a few times and never could catch her feeding it. Um, and so, you know, it was still alive when I went home on the second, uh, came back up here on the third to pick up something real quick. And uh, it was uh, dead over on the right-hand side of the uh -huh. tree. And so no place else. I uh, couldn't, like I said, I had looked for the other two. There were no, no carcasses, um, you know, no bodies. So I don't know if something got into the nest and this one survived it. Uh, I don't know. The, that, the, that rain that we had, I mean, I don't know if it was, uh, you know, they have things that are called rain bombs, you know, where it just comes down. It's yeah. a, it's a wet microburst is what it is. And, uh, it rained so hard and it was so dense. I mean, just trying to look across even the parking lot, you, you really couldn't see across the parking lot very well. So, you know, you know, we're looking at from those three up there was, that was the morning when the third one hatched. So in eight days, it had gone from pink little things with some fuzz and big old round eyes to looking like a robin. You know, but it was about in my research, I've done another seven or eight days and they would have been able to fledge. Um, so, you know, the cycle of life is tough. Um, you know, rainstorms happen, cats happen, snakes happen. Um, I've been watching the nest to see if she reclutches uh, because robins can clutch multiple times per year. So I'm hoping that she, uh, uh, comes back to the nest and lays uh, some more eggs. She's got time to fledge some more babies. And I hope that happens. And uh, we'll just continue that journey if it happens. If not, there's a uh, um, empty robin's nest that'll uh, stay through the winter and disappear sometime next summer, I guess, when it finally falls apart. You know, so, I could, uh, here, here in the Denver area, I'm in Castle Rock, about 30 miles south of Denver. And a lot of robins, uh, springtime and even early summer. And uh, when they finally do, when they finally do fledge, you kind of wonder how they ever got down there because uh, they almost look like this photo from July second, um, and, and maybe maybe a day or two after that, they change so much and they make a they make a certain sound. I'm, I, I wish I could give you the sound. They make a certain sound to communicate with the adult so that the adult knows that the baby's there. And these adults spend 
all day long for several days feeding these babies. So let's take a positive spin on this. Storms happen, cats and snakes happen, but these birds have ways of reappropriating. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, cl clearly there's lots of robins out there. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I felt bad about it. I started to put it back in the nest and I thought, no, you know, that that's not gonna probably help anything. No, you're um, right, you're right. You know, um, mama, cause it wasn't making a sound. I, 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 I listened and, and uh, you know, I, I got this picture across the parking lot zoomed in with my phone, uh, you know, and uh, and make my phone quit ringing. And um, uh, she just, when I was out there, she knew I was there and would not go over there uh, to feed it. So I just tried to stay away, but you know, um, like I said, the other two were completely gone, just disappeared. So hard to say what happened. They might have been in bushes somewhere and I just didn't see them. And they could, she may have managed to get them another week or week and a half old to where they old enough to, to fledge and survive. But it's the cycle of life and there's not much you can do about it. And I wasn't going to chew on worms and then stuff them down the bird's throat. So, um, and, you know, it just, it, it's like I said, it just didn't, the bird just didn't look healthy to me. Uh, but it had been, you know, sadly, they lose, like Scott said, you couldn't see across the parking lot hardly. Uh, you could barely see those guys up on the tower when it was raining at its hardest. So I suspect the rain probably had a lot to do with, with this nest's demise. It most assuredly did not end up like I envisioned this little project. You know, I had hopes of joyously watching these birds, you know, hop around and become, you know, semi-mature juveniles and nope, not to happen. So next week, we're on the wing next week. We're in flight. So a uh, little, little heads up on what we're going to talk about. Um, we'll be looking at birds that are in flight, um, which will be interesting. And then I'm changing the order. I had a plan for the week after that, but the week after that, a uh, number of our um, viewers have sent in birds of their own. I've got some really cool pictures uh, that we'll be doing a viewer submitted um, uh, pro, uh, slideshow. So hey, I look forward to that. Let's do it. Yep. Let's do it. All right. So any, anything else that... Uh... Anything else that we should uh, discuss about woodpeckers? I mean, is there something that? Uh... If you want woodpeckers, you have to have standing dead timber. That's it. Huh? That's that, that's it. If you don't, if you live in the prairie where there's no trees, you're not going to have woodpeckers. You've got to have trees, and you know what? Well, standing dead timber for certain species, uh, like redheaded woodpeckers but you've got to have trees to have woodpeckers. Um, so Martin Eastberg, Eastburn also, says that before we close that. here, Kent, <laughs> sorry. Someone from the audience is saying that he sent in a picture of a red crested woodpecker. What happened? Red crested. That's what he says. Um, Kent, why don't you look and see uh, if you can find that? And he's been checking. I don't know. The, yeah. So uh, Book Davy says vultures, right? I actually, I actually live the vultures. Okay. Private conversation here. Who was it? Uh, Martin Eastburn. By the way, uh, woodpeckers also peck houses. I mean, oh. you, you always hear people complaining about those darn it's, woodpeckers and they're drumming on my house. Yeah. It's, they're always looking for insects that might be, you know, half an inch underneath your siding. I, I didn't use it because it's only 740 kilobytes. Uh, it's very small. It's a thumbnail, basically. Why don't you show it anyway? Um, I'm working on it. Okay. Um, it is a pileated woodpecker. 
Yeah, the name of the file is actually thumbnail red crested. Give me a second be, here. Yeah, be careful but, about people naming birds of birds that don't exist. There's no red. There's no red crested woodpecker. Well, there is a red crested woodpecker because we're going to look at it, but it's not really a red crested. It's some. Woodpecker. It's called something like a red headed or a red naped or right. Uh, hang on a second. Didn't save it. Come on. You know, as a bird, as a birder of over 35 years, I, I'm pretty anal about making sure that we name a bird what it's called, and there's no red crested woodpecker. Right. So put chalk me up for being anal. Uh, you know, I mean, you call things. You're a birder. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm a pretty evil guy, actually. A really evil guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. There it is. All right. Let me see if I can get it to open up here. Got to blow it up really big to where we can see it. Let me show I'll tell the screen. audience something that they don't know about you, Dan. And that is, is that he is, uh, maybe still is a member of a barbershop quartet, something like that. He can sing. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm a member of a hundred man voice a cho chorus, a cappella. In other words, wow. no, no accompaniment. Oh, wow. Uh, a cappella. A cappella. Called the sound. Percentage, Martin. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pileated. Yeah. Probably a male because you can see its crest has some pretty bright color to it. Could be a female. But yeah, pileated woodpecker. Sorry about that, Martin. I just went with, uh, it was so small I didn't put it in, but you've taught me a lesson. I appreciate it, and I'll use every one from now on. <laughs> you know, another additional lesson to that, uh, you know, to be, for, for beginning bird watchers, let's say, and they're really anxious to learn well, how do I, what's the best way to see birds and that kind of thing, you want to make sure that the sun is always behind you. Hmm. because what you have is such backlight that you're never going to get detail so it doesn't matter whether they're using binoculars or a, a spotting scope telescope or a camera make sure as best possible that the sun or the brightness is behind you birds and shadows turn into shadows exactly right Kent yeah you know, it's uh, anytime you try and you can't, you just can't pull detail. My photography background, it is impossible to pull detail out of a shadow area many times, especially color. You might be able to get shape and some form and wing bars, but getting any kind of color out of a shadow is very, very difficult. So uh, even on cloudy days, you know, there's plenty of, you know, if you get out in a swamp on a cloudy day when the ducks are flying, you know, there's some beautiful colors that you can see. Uh, easy to see green wing teal and blue wing teal and tell the difference. Um, mallard heads just shine. But boy, when you get sun on those birds and those feathers, they just explode with beauty. Yep. Just explode with beauty. But even if it's a cloudy day and you're looking into the sun, it takes just it takes away from the color. Yep. May the sun always be behind you. So, Harold Locke would like to know, Dan, if if there's a YouTube channel for uh, for you singing, or yes. for the group that you're in. Yes. Go to the sound of the Rockies, as in the Rocky Mountains, and you can go on to YouTube, and they probably have. 25 or 30 or 40 different songs. Just Capella, listen to them. Barbershop oh, no. Quartet or concert. Well, okay. To correct that, quartets have been spawned out of the out of the uh, choruses. The choruses are could be yeah, there's more than four people. That's all sure. the way up over a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. The sound is actually pretty unbelievable. If you've never heard a barbershop chorus. It's something to behold. Love it. 
I think we're getting ready to hear some of it. You are? No, yeah, we can't play it. You can't play it. Copyright. It's very used to do it short. You can sample six or eight seconds. Yeah, I'm going to send him a link. Sound of the go. Rockies. Here we are. Sound of the Rockies go the distance. All right. Anything else? I'm good. I've clicked on that You're link good? so I okay. can play it. Yep. All right. And what's what's our next on the wing program again? What's in flight. Topic? In flight. In, in flight. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. And um, uh, tomorrow uh, we will have our next episode on focus on astrophotography. And um, until that time, you guys have a good night. Uh, Dan, thanks very much for uh, being on our program as, as usual and Kent for preparing all the, the uh, uh, images and, and uh, sounds of, of birds. And, um, and to the audience for uh, uh, hanging in there with us every day. So thanks so much. And um, uh, until tomorrow, we'll see you later. Take care. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. What kind of bird is that, Dan? It's a woodpecker. Oh, it looks like a hairy. But it has a red rump. Oh, it's got a women. It's got a white bar on the on the sides. It looks like it's a sap sapsucker. Thank you.